I find yeah, running a marathon is easier than reading 10, 15 pages of a book. It's less draining. It takes more out of my brain to read 10, 15 pages of a book than it does to run a three and a half hour marathon. I suffer from cognitive fatigue. So physically, I'm, I can run, I can swim, I can bike, get really tired really quickly. If there's too much going off in a room, I can only last so long and tolerate so much going on that I just have to get out of the room and just get away from the noise or all the activity that's going on. I was um, in Auckland doing the half Ironman 70.3 when uh, whilst I was on the bike um, my heart stopped for 14 minutes and fell off the bike smashed the left side of my head broke 17 bones in my face uh, broke both my eye sockets um, the thing I remember about the race was driving down to the event in the morning going down to the water for the swim uh, I remember seeing the other athletes when the doctors came in and said that I'd need an ICD uh, and also I couldn't see but that's because I <laughs> I couldn't remember to open to open my eyes uh, because my eyes were so uh, swollen they said I looked like a panda um, and all I all I was thinking at that point is I need I just need to get up and start walking when they said no y you're not going anywhere that's where it was like mm, some, something. This can't be that good. So when I when I came out of hospital and got home, all I all I was thinking was the sooner I can get back to work, the sooner I'm back to normal. I spent 23 years in the British Army. I finished off as a warrant officer, class one, a regimental sergeant major. Um, I've done three tours of Afghanistan. Uh, been all over the world and as much as I like working and I, I still volunteer at a shop three times a week because I still need something to give me some purpose but at any time I can say no I can't do that and I do regularly speak to the guy at the shop and say I'm not in because um, I just can't handle what I've got there I need to be at home and that's, that's the big plus that's come out of it. When I slipped over skiing and uh, I was heading for the rock, um, watching it come towards me between my legs, I thought um, quickly that it was going to hurt, I was going to die, and my other thought was if I die, I've had a good life. So I bent over to see if I could still bend over. When my nose almost touched my ankles, um, knowing how flexible I normally was, uh, that was scary. Uh, I probably had half a dozen shots of morphine, and by that time, I was on top of the world. When we flew down, I thought this is a great opportunity to get the camera out and get some shots of the mountain. I was there saying, get some photos, get some photos. This is a brilliant opportunity. We're in a helicopter over the mountains. Get some photos, get some photos. And she's going, shh, 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 be quiet. <laughs> when I'm training, I, I don't think 
about my accident or my time in hospital because the, the back doesn't cause me any trouble now. Uh, there's four bolts or screws going into my vertebrae and two rods of steel. So it doesn't move. What does cause me issues is the muscles either side below and above that try to compensate. What are you gonna do? A two hour run, concentrating on uh, breathing four in, four out, and then concentrating on breathing. So it's, I haven't done two hours for some time. The longest I've done recently is uh, 14 Ks. Uh, so this will be about 20, 21 Ks. I'm not personally scared at all because I don't think, I don't think I am. What I would be scared of more than anything is uh, that the family's got to deal with it again. I, I know to a certain degree it would be relief that I've finished the marathon after everything. Sarah's already an Ironman and I'm not. And at the moment there's only one Ironman in our family and that's Sarah. When the year that I couldn't do the Ironman because of the accident, Ironman invited us down as VIPs. A friend of ours, uh, Pavel, who was visiting me in hospital all the time, uh, when Pavel crossed the line, it was like he's just ran my Ironman race because there wasn't much between us. And that felt great. Um, uh, I know I was upset by it that I wasn't doing it, but it was great to see him finish it because it was like that should have that was me, that was Myris. When I saw Sarah finish, um, this, year, <laughs> um, this year was just awesome. Yeah. And I think that's that's what I'm that's what I want. Just that satisfaction that it's done. I'm I'm a lucky person still to be walking, not in a wheelchair. I'm lucky that I'm still alive. I've got a second chance to to do something. Um, so I thought doing triathlons would be a way to prove to myself that I was back to full fitness, um, just like anyone else. After nine years of going and watching Iron Man with uh, the Waitakere Tri Club, I finally got so enthusiastic, I decided to do one. Two weeks later after the Iron Man, I paid my money. So for the last uh, 11 and a half months, I've been training, knowing that I've spent my money and I'm going to do it. There's a lot involved in preparing just to go out for a ride. That's it. Just doing a mental check of all the things I need before I go. Over the last 16 years or 16 so years ago, uh, I had depression and that um, I was seeing a psychologist, getting medication for it. So I struggled with that for about eight years. Uh, no, I wouldn't say I'm a strong person. It takes a lot of motivation. I'm not a self-motivated self-starter. Uh, so my coach helps. Um, I wouldn't be here doing this today if it wasn't for a coach.
We don't really know because it seems he can't remember the actual event of his heart stopping. Right. And literally he was on the bars and... The next thing it was Thursday. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we and don't really know not what to what, yeah. yeah. So we don't really know the, what to watch out for. No. Uh, um, the, the only thing I, I think with, with my body, yeah, with my body is um, if I start to get out of breath, that's not a good sign for me. So sure. I wouldn't have to, a few times I've, uh, if I've been out on a run, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just walk. The issue my cardiologist had with me doing this is not the heart side of it, it's uh, sustaining another head injury by right. coming off the bike. Right. That's his main concern. One, one, ten. I think it might have been one, ten. Everybody, it's Mike Riley here at the Undies Run for the 35th anniversary of Ironman New Zealand. De eerste gedachte dat ik een Ironman wilde doen, dat is 13 jaar geleden, in 2006. Toen was ik een, een jaar op reis in Nieuw-Zeeland en Australië. En toen waar we nu zitten in Taupo, daar kwam ik s'avonds aan met, uh, met een busje. En toen ben ik vanuit mijn busje ben ik naar de Ierse pub gegaan, ben ik uh, wat gaan eten. En naast de Ierse pub zat een, uh, een nachtclub, de Holy Cow. Ik ben die nachtclub ingegaan, een lekkere feestje gevierd, gedanst, een uh, biertje gedronken. En de volgende ochtend werd ik, uh, werd ik wakker en ik hoorde allemaal een hoop geluid om een busje heen. En er stond nog iemand met een oranje hesje aan en ik zeg, wat is er aan de hand? Ja, we hebben hier uh, Iron Man vandaag. Ja, als je, als je je busje nog weg wil zetten, moet je het nu doen, anders dan kun je daar heel de dag niet meer weg. Ik zeg, nou, ik laat het lekker staan. Ik zeg, uh, ik vind het prachtig om Iron Man te zien. En toen heb ik uh, gezegd, voor mijn veertigste ga ik ooit een halve doen. En voor mijn vijftigste wil ik ooit een Ironman gaan doen. Ik heb een karakter om voor de Ironman te gaan, om ervoor te trainen. Alleen het maakt het een stuk makkelijker voor mij. Omdat ik Steve eigenlijk als coach achter me heb. Die ook een trainingsschema voor me maakt. Waar, waar ik nooit aan wilde beginnen aan het trainingsschema. Ik wilde alles op gevoel doen. En Piet, die mij ook meetrekt. En op een woensdag lekker vijf uurtjes gaat fietsen samen met hem. En 17 kilometer gaat hardlopen. Dit maakt het voor mij wel uh, makkelijker en een stuk specialer. Als ik aan het trainen ben, denk ik wel eens van hoe zou het voelen als ik over de fitnesslijn ga. Dan krijg ik al kippenvel. Ik denk dat is een moment. Het is moeilijk te beschrijven, denk ik. Het zal op die dag zelf zal het gaan gebeuren. Misschien barst ik een traan uit en, en komt er zoveel in me, in me naar boven. Uh, ik denk dat het al de laatste paar kilometer. Dan begint die emotie al, want dan weet je dat je het gaat redden en, en dan gaan we lekker een biertje pakken op het einde. Al goed? 10 minuten late. Um, Got time enough. Yeah, time enough. <laughs> There's never enough time. <laughs> right. Computer's off, pedals are ready. 
that end is ready. Put my bottles on. And oh, you hey. mate? Uh, oh, good day. <laughs> it's the day, man. Get it's it on, mate. Day. Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Oh, man. Are you nervous? Nothing. I ain't, uh, no, I've, had, I've had my nerves. Yeah. My nerves are gone. I think they were last week, weren't they? Still on time, so the nerves are under control. Saturday morning swim. Cut off the swim. Right. Um, Stay right to the swim action. You've got two minutes before my ear goes in, and then all bets are off. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes. <laughs> Twenty-two. I'm in my zone. So we're in the three minute countdown to the female pro start. So number one seed on the So tired. Sleepy tired. It's me ten, uh, ten minutes. I'm just um, really tired. Really tired. As in sleepy tired. Are you allowed to lie down? I don't think you are. I'll, I'll, stop, at, I'll stop at the med, med tent and, stop just, at the med tent. and just sleep. Oh. I, I, I might be a, an extra half hour. That's all right. But, but I need to. Sli I'm hanging. I'm. I'm hanging out. Uh, when I first on that first loop, when I came past the first time, past the tent, I thought, God, I feel absolutely shattered all of a sudden. So I went up, stopped at the um, uh, aid station, loads of ice. Coming back down, I was just like. God, I just uh, so tired, and I'd had the, I'd had all the aid, aid stuff uh, to for energy and that. I was just like, no, I need I need to get my head down. I really need to get my head down. And it's like, if I can sleep now, it doesn't matter. I can sleep for an hour, and then just carry on going. Um, someone someone said, I think you might get disqualified if you stop on the course. So he's got 14k to go, so hopefully he'll finish and it will all be good. I just want him to finish now because I'm not getting anxious. I was going through your mind. Just worry. One, I want him to complete it and do well, but two, I just uh, want to make sure that he's okay really and uh, finishes in one piece. I tried to keep overheating and as soon as I do I just get so tired like really quick and so I've had so much ice and it
just cools me from the inside out. So every aid station, I'm just eating so much ice. So it is slowing me down, but I don't care because it's going to get me through it. doing the training for it but then just keeping going and managing to get it done with the support of everyone who's helped me um, has, has closed it, closed it out and I'm happy enough with that, I really am. I'll still do marathons, I'll still do 70.3s, I'll still do distance events but the brain isn't lungs, lungs keep breathing, the brain doesn't keep breathing, that's the way I see it and so Physically, I'm capable, but mentally, my brain just is saying that nah, you need to go to sleep at this point, and so I accept it. <laughs> 